Welcome back to YouTube, I'm Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here's another exciting day for Android users. Google just released the second beta of Android 12 and I have it here on my Pixel 5 to show you all the new changes. So without further ado, let's jump in. Starting with the always on display and the lock screen, on the right I have the first beta and on the left I have the second one. The first change you will see is in the date, it's written in a bigger font in the second beta plus the alarm and do not disturb icons are next to each other instead of being on top of each other. Also the weather information is gone from the always on display and also the lock screen. And when I tap the screen from the always on display you will see that the do not disturb icon will disappear which is not the case in the first beta. And I also found better animations when I press the power button in the second beta. I also found a couple of new toggles under the lock screen settings. The first one is called show wallet which will allow access to the wallet from the lock screen and the quick settings. And the second one is for show device controls. This will also give access to the lock screen for your device controls. However, after activating the two toggles, when I go to my lock screen and pull down the notification shade trying to access my device controls, it says here the device is locked and it doesn't show me anything. So hopefully we're going to see it working in the future. Now let's talk about the notification shade and it got a complete redesign starting from the pull down animation. As you see here side by side, they look totally different. Also the quick settings tiles are now using a pull shaped design instead of rounded rectangles. And when I push it all the way down, you will also see more rounded corners here compared to the first beta. The brightness slider is now thicker and it's using a slightly different icon. The quick settings area will always have a dark background regardless your device theme. If you take a look here, you see the dark theme is turned off and when I turn on the switch, there is no impact. The only place that will change is the notifications area. And if your quick settings are expanded, you will no longer see the notifications icons like in the first beta. There is also a new power button over here. Tapping on it will give you a much smaller power menu. There is no more device controls or credit cards in the power menu. It's only for the basic actions. I'm going to talk about this later in the video. Now let's talk about the tiles. There are plenty of new tiles over here and the first one is called internet. This one is for your mobile data and Wi-Fi. You will no longer see two separate tiles. I already have it on my Pixel 4a because this is a modded version of Android 12 that has some hidden features activated, but this is how it looks in the official release. When you tap on the internet tile, you will get this card at the bottom of the screen. It will allow you to change your Wi-Fi settings. You can connect to other networks or turn your mobile data on or off. You will also notice a small X next to the Wi-Fi I'm currently connected to. When I tap on it, I get a message saying Wi-Fi won't auto connect for now, which means you can temporarily stop your phone from connecting to this network. Tapping on it again will simply reconnect you back. And if you want to join a new network, it will show you a floating window to enter the password. The second tile I have is called wallet. Tapping on it should give you a quick access to your Google Pay cards. But unfortunately, Google Pay on this build doesn't work properly and it won't allow me to activate my cards. However, if you want to see how it looks, I already have it activated on the first beta. Tapping on it will give you the same exact screen to choose the card and make your payment. The third one is device controls. It will simply take you to the same page we used to have under the power menu of Android 11 with the same options at the top right corner to add and edit your controls. You will also see the text in some tiles is now moving to show you the full information in case it doesn't fit. Next, there are two new tiles to temporarily block the camera and the microphone access for all apps, even if you granted them the permissions before. And when you turn off the switches and try to use your camera or microphone, you will get a message similar to this one, either to cancel or tap on unblock. When you unblock your sensor and go back to the quick settings area, you will see the action is taken over here. One more tile called the alarm and if you have one already activated, it will be highlighted. In this case, tapping on it will take you to the alarm page in the clock app. But if you don't have any, it will take you straight away to set a new one. And when it comes to the notifications, they also got redesigned. As you see, when I scroll down to see more notifications, it's now filling the entire screen and it goes over the quick tiles, which is not the case in the first beta of Android 12. The smart replies are now using rounded rectangles and instead of a pill shaped design. The whole notification area is now more separated from the quick settings and it has these rounded corners. 
also the small handle over here is no longer showing. The clear all and the history buttons are now more prominent compared to the first beta. The text field in the notification shade is now bigger. There is also a cool animation when you tap and hold on any of the tiles. Let me show you this. As you see, the tile will fill the entire screen first and then the settings page will appear. Let me show you this again. And I do really like this one. You will also notice the cellular network signal is no longer showing in the status bar, but you can see it when you expand your notification shape. The last thing to talk about in this category is the media controls. And as you see here in beta 2, it's much smaller compared to the one we have in beta 1. Also, the media output device name is back again instead of only using the icon. And the app icon is no longer showing on top of the song name, but it's showing at the bottom right corner of the thumbnail which is also much smaller than before. The media controls are also smaller and they are shifted to the side instead of being in the center. And now let's expand both to see the differences. The media card is also smaller in this view and when you tap and hold on it, you will see better buttons. They have a pill-shaped design instead of using text only. And you will no longer see this weird thin line between the media controls and the quick settings. As you see over here, let me put it in dark theme. It will be more obvious. So as you see, this white thin line is no longer available. Here. Now let's talk about adaptive theming or auto theming of Android 12. Keep in mind the feature is activated by default and there is no way to turn it off. Here's my wallpaper and as you see, it has some purple and orange colors and these are the colors the system picked for me. You will see it everywhere in the OS, starting from the buttons, the backgrounds, the app drawer, your settings, and everything. So let's take a look at some options here to see the difference. So here's another wallpaper and let's take a look at the notification shade. As you see, the colors are matching nicely with the wallpaper. Similarly for the media controls and it's using a green color to match with the brown color I have, the app drawer, even the app folders are impacted. Let's take a look at the clock. Here's how it looks. Your pin code keypad is also matching the theme and let's go to settings and go inside any of the menus and as you see everything is turning brown now let's talk about widgets and now in beta 2 when you scroll down you will see a new section here called conversations this one includes that conversation widget we got in beta 1 but instead of being listed under the system UI category, it's now listed under conversations. Also, the size of the widget is different. Here it's a three by one, while here it's two by one. Not only this, but when you add the widget to your home screen and then link it to any of the conversations you have, and then tap on it again to resize it, you will see a new edit button over here. Tapping on it will allow you to change the linked conversation. Also, the most recent widgets will show on top of each other instead of being next to each other like in beta one. Now let's talk about the home screen. And the first change is in the drag and the drop targets. So for example, when you drag any of the apps, you will see at the top the remove and the uninstall targets are now using a pill shaped design instead of a text only. Everything in this view is also matching your device theme. Not only this, but when you try to drag and drop any conversation widget specifically, you will see a new setup target at the top. When you drop your widget on top of it, it will allow you to relink it again, as I showed you earlier. And when you tap and hold on your home screen, you will see a new animation that slides from the bottom towards the top, and instead of moving towards the sides, and that's also the case with the app shortcuts. And when you open apps, you will see a new animation as well. It's slightly slower than before and it goes from the center towards the edges of the screen. The recent apps screen is now using a solid background that matches your device theme and instead of showing your home screen wallpaper, also the screenshot and select buttons are now using different icons. And when you tap on the app icon, you will see a new menu. It has the same buttons as before, but it's much smaller because the icons and text are next to each other. You will also see a new animation when you switch between apps by sliding your finger. As you see here in beta one, there is a bounce effect at the end of the swipe which is not the case in beta 2. It's very solid. Next, screenshots. Now when you try to take a screenshot, you will see the small X at the top right corner is back. And when you tap on edit, you will see the save button of the markup app is now using a fill color. Next, 
The double tap gesture is finally here. If you take a look here, when I double tap my Pixel 5 from the back, I can take a screenshot. And if you want to modify the action, simply go to settings, then system, gestures, and the first option here is called quick tap. When you go inside, you can choose between plenty of options. The first one is take a screenshot, access your digital assistant, play or pause media, see recent apps, show notifications, or open an app. And there is a cool hidden feature under the open app menu. When you tap the gear icon and then scroll down, some apps have the gear icon next to them. And when you tap on it, you will be able to choose certain actions from within the app. In case of Apple Music, I can jump straight away to search. And for example, when we choose calendar here, you can create a new reminder, new event, new task, in addition to opening the app. And finally, there is one more toggle under the quick tap feature called require stronger taps. So if you found yourself accidentally triggering the gesture, simply turn on the switch to require stronger taps. Next, the volume controls. And here's a screenshot for the two designs side by side. In beta 2, it's much slimmer and it matches the same design language we saw in the brightness slider. Not only this, but there are also other changes like the live caption button is now circular instead of being a square the more button the slider and the sound profiles are all in the same container and instead of being floating on top of each other and let me show you in reality how it looks so this is how you can change the volume but if you take a look here you will see a shaded dot in the center of the slider i think this one will tell you uh, where is the 50 percent volume is located uh, that I'm assuming this, but I see it exactly in the center of the slider and I don't see the same one here in beta 1. And here is how changing the sound profile will look like as well. It looks pretty much the same, but using a slimmer design. And here's another screenshot with two sliders at the same time if you are casting media to any smart device. It looks much better than before but still looks weird this white space at the top is much bigger than the volume sliders so hopefully google will refine it more in the future next the privacy features and the first change is the new camera and the mic indicators at the top right corner as you see here it will start as a bubble showing the icon of your sensor and then it will be minimized into a small green dot at the top right corner and when you pull down your notification shade, you will see the same bubble again, and you can tap on it to see which app accessed your camera. And when you tap on the expanded notification, you can go straight away to the app permissions to start modifying them. And let's say we are gonna record a video, so it's gonna use the microphone and the camera at the same time. And this is how it looks. And when you tap on it, it will show you two items, one for each sensor. Now let's talk about the privacy settings. And the first thing you see at the top is called privacy dashboard. It will first show you this simple chart at the top to show you the most accessed sensors in your phone in the past 24 hours. And if you want to dig deeper, you can tap on the location permission, for example, and start seeing which apps accessed your location for how long and when. That includes Google Apps and third-party apps as well. At the bottom, you have a button called Manage Permissions and it will take you, for example, to your location settings so you can start modifying the permissions you want or you can tap on any of the apps right here and it will take you straight away to the permissions of this app specifically. You can also include system apps by tapping the three dots at the top right corner and then tap on Show System by this, you might see things like adaptive connectivity, Bluetooth, and so on. Under the location, camera, and the microphone, you can also see other permissions like the calendar access, which apps have access to your calendar, calls, and so on and so forth. You will also find some new toggles under the privacy settings like the camera and the microphone access, which are the same thing we saw in the notifications shade. One more toggle here called show clipboard access, and this one will give you a toast notification at the bottom of the screen if any app accessed your clipboard. Next, the power menu. Now when you press and hold the power button, you will no longer see the same menu we used to have in Android 11, but instead you will get a floating window that includes some basic controls like emergency, lockdown, power off, and restart. You can access the same power menu from the notification shade as I showed you earlier using this power button, and this will allow you to use the feature listed under system, gestures, and then power menu, and then hold for assistant. By this, you will be able to 
press and hold on your power button to activate Google Assistant in addition to using your normal power controls. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of this new approach. I do prefer this one more because with one press, I can access three things at once instead of going through tiles and swiping down to get my notification shade. So I hope Google will revert back or even give us the option to choose which one we prefer. Next, the one-handed mode got a new animation. If you take a look here in beta one, you will see this weird bounce effect when you go in and out, which is not the case in beta two. However, it moves nice and slowly. Next, the picture in picture window is now using more rounded corners compared to the one we have in the first beta. Now let's take a look at the differences in settings. In beta two, you will see each menu item will show you some of the sub menus underneath it, which is not the case in beta one. And that's a really nice touch. And when you go inside network and the internet, now you will have one menu for accessing your internet settings, either if it's Wi-Fi or cellular. So when you go inside internet here, you have your cellular data settings and you can also access your Wi-Fi settings from here. They are pretty much the same, but the only difference is in the placement. And also there is a new button here at the top right corner in the internet page. Tapping on it will refresh all your data connections. So let me try this. As you see, it will disconnect from the Wi-Fi and the cellular data and refresh everything and then reconnect back again. Now all my connections are back. You will see another menu item here called calls and SMS. But when I go inside, everything is dimmed and it has a section for the Wi-Fi calling, which is not available in my region anyways. From here, I can also tap the plus sign to add a new SIM card if I want to or access my cellular settings. You can do the same thing in beta one by going to the mobile network settings, but it doesn't have the same plus sign in beta two. And when you go to hotspot and tethering and then Wi-Fi hotspot, you will see a new option here, here called extend compatibility. It's the same thing as maximize compatibility, but it has a different name. Under NFC, you will see a new graphical representation for the feature. And when you scroll down in settings, you will see the heading is now using a darker background compared to the rest of the page. Next, under notifications, and then do not disturb, and then go to schedules you will see the gaming mode is no longer showing the same controls we used to have in beta one, but it says here, this enables do not disturb while playing games. Tapping the X over here will do nothing. It will take you back one step. So the feature seems to be broken, but if you have it ticked, it will activate do not disturb once you start a game. Next, the battery settings. And the first change is in the bigger text and thicker bar. Also the time left for your battery is written under the bar instead of being on top. When you go inside battery usage, here you will see a new graph, plus the three dots at the top right corner are now gone. From here, we used to be able to activate the system usage, but when you scroll down in this new design, you will see a separate section for the system usage. Once you expand it, you will, see, you will be able to see the information you need. Under the storage settings, you will no longer see the smart storage toggle, but instead you will only get the free up space option that takes you to the files app. Under the display settings, when you tap the brightness level, you will get a much bigger slider. The styles and wallpapers menu item is now renamed to wallpaper and the style. Under accessibility, the text and display, extra dim and dark theme got their own icons. Also the extra dim got a quick toggle to activate the feature. Dark theme can now take you inside the dark theme settings and instead of only having a toggle. System controls, vibration and haptics also got their own icons, which is not the case in beta one. And the tap assistance has been renamed to timing controls. And you will see even more features are getting their own icons right now. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the changes I managed to get my hands on in the second beta of Android 12. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.